G'day Dark Realmers, it's horror author and illustrator Michael J. Elliott here with you again and thank you for joining me for another episode of the Dark Realm Diaries. Today we've got another book and trivia video for you and this week we're looking at um, Sheridan Le Fanu's classic vampire novella Carmilla. Okay, Dark Realms, now because we um, have usually a lot of information to try and get through on um, our videos, I've made a slight change and I've divided our videos up into three unique sections. Section one is about the author, section two is about the book, and section three is about uh, the movies and the other adaptations that um, the book went through. So let's start with the first section, and that's all about the author. Joseph Thomas Sheridan Le Fanu was born on the 18th of August in 1814 and he was born into a very literary family. His grandmother and his great uncle were both playwrights. His mother was also a writer and his niece Ron Rhoda uh, Broughton went on to become a successful novelist. Now he had an elder sister and a younger brother and his younger brother William complained to their father who by the way was um, a minister in um, the um, Church of Ireland and he complained that they weren't really learning anything from their tutor. So they basically asked to have the tutor dismissed, which their father did. And Sheridan Le Fanu continued his education um, by teaching himself from reading from his father's library. Now, he went on to study law at Trinity College in Dublin in um, 1839. But the interesting thing was, he never actually practiced law, even though he was called to the bar uh, in 1839. Um, he um, went into journalism instead and he began um, submitting short stories and one of his first short stories was called The Ghost and the Bone Cellar. Now in 1840 he actually began to own some newspapers and he actually owned um, the Dublin Evening Mail and he ended up owning several newspapers over his lifetime. Now he married Susanna Bennett on the 18th of December in 1844 and they had four children, Eleanor, Emma, Thomas and George. And Sheridan Le Fanu um, had a successful uh, career with writing as we all know and we'll look soon at his books. And he died um, at the age of 58 on the 7th of February 1873. Now, Le Fanu wrote um, many short stories, um, but his three most famous works are Uncle Silas, The House by the Graveyard, and of course, Camilla. Now, Camilla has a number of claims to fame. First off, it's um, one of the very earliest examples of vampire fiction. Secondly, it also has a female vampire. And thirdly, it predates Dracula, that's Bram Stoker's Dracula, by a massive 26 years. So you can see why it's become such a classic of the um, gothic genre. Now of course Camilla is also known uh, because it has a lesbian love story involved. Now of course it's not overt um, because of the time it was written of course but um, it's definitely there and the novel tends to show um, the love between um, Camilla and the protagonist Laura as um, just a very intimate sort of friendship you know there's nothing you don't read anything sexual there um, but in one passage Laura actually wonders herself whether Camilla is wanting something more from her in terms of their friendship. Now the basic storyline which is very complex, I won't go into all of it, but basically um, Laura uh, lives in a, a castle in Styria um, with her retired English father who's retired uh, from the Austrian army and um, 
they now live in this castle together. But she's very lonely. She has no friends, and and um, it's a very isolated existence now. Um, her father has arranged for a, a friend of his to bring his niece uh, to visit uh, Laura, so she won't be so lonely. But um, the niece dies in mysterious circumstances just before she's due to arrive. Now, after this, um, just outside their castle is a carriage accident, and you know they race to the scene, and there's um, the mother and um, you know a few other people, and Camilla. Um, now the mother says, look, we, we have urgent business, we can't stay, but could you please look after Camilla, um, you know, until we can send for her. And um, she uh, explains, look, don't ask her about her past, don't try and find out anything about her, She, but she's of sound mind, she's okay. Well, of course, Laura is overwhelmed and overjoyed um, to have a friend, um, but Laura herself starts becoming sicker and um, ill um, and that's where the vampirism comes into um, and her father becomes suspicious and the story plays out from there and one of the things in the story is too that Carmilla is actually just an anagram she's actually as a vampire she's lived for hundreds of years and she's the Countess Karnstein and her real name is Makala uh, which is an anagram of Camilla and um, that's uh, the basic setup of the story, Dark Realm. Is now, of course, um, you know you can you can read more about it, <clears throat> and um, all the other characters, of course, in the novel. And the novel is freely available. It's um, available, you know, as a free download because it's in the public domain now. Um, but you can also buy revised versions, and of course, you can buy a paperback of the. Um, of the novel too, uh, because it's considered now a work of classic literature. Um, and so because it has that um, element of um, a friendship that borders on a, a sort of um, love, um, which is in some ways um, a little bit, uh, you wonder if it's unrequited love, but also it's a dark, unholy love because you wonder whether Camilla is actually sort of really and truly in love with Laura or she's just, um, Laura's just another one of her many, many victims that she's had over the years and that she's very good at wiling and getting her own way and um, getting her her um, herself ingratiated into, into the lives of people and, and other families. Um, so from that point of view, the character development is wonderful. It's a wonderfully psychological um, um, read. Um, it's also, as I said, classically gothic dark. Now, um, here's a note for my fan Amber. Um, you would be able to read this Amber without any problem and you'd also be able to watch some of the movie versions which are, some of them are very very subtle um, and some of them of course went the full vampire route and, and decided to show as much as they could. But in this next section I'm going to be talking about some of the movies that have been adapted and believe me there's quite a lot. Now there's been at least 10 versions of Camilla filmed but uh, we're going to be only looking at the top four, the most well-known ones and the first one was known as Vampire um, and it was made by Danish director uh, Carl, oh, sorry, yep, Carl Dreyer. Sorry about that, I had a momentary blank. Okay, now he uh, made the movie and gave it a more supernatural feel, um, introduced, you know, images of the Grim Reaper and so forth. But the biggest change he made was he deleted any and all references to lesbianism or sexuality. Now you have to remember at the time too, Dark Realmers, that um, even though, you know, European cinema was far more advanced in terms of, um, you know, experimentation and what they would 
attempt and get away with. Um, there were still the social norms of the day where you didn't talk about um, sexuality, you certainly didn't show it. Now, in Hollywood, of course, um, uh, the um, church had a big say in the way movies were presented um, because there was a code that strictly had to be adhered to. Now, I don't know if you know about this, but with bedroom scenes, you weren't allowed to show people you know, together in bed. There was always, in, at least in Hollywood, you had to show um, at least one person having their foot on the floor, and that was supposed to represent that they weren't actually undressed or doing anything, you know. Um, so um, that one um, concentrated more on um, the, the vampirism um, which was behind Carmilla itself. Now another well-known version was uh, one that was directed by Roger Vadim in 1960 and it was called Et Mourir de Plaisir, which translates as And to Die of Pleasure, but it was actually released worldwide as Blood and Roses. Um, and uh, you can check that one out too because it's interesting to see the differences between um, uh, the cultures that, that make movies, okay? Um, and you'll see this all the time, Dark Realmers. Um, Hollywood has got a tradition of remaking films from uh, Britain and, and Europe and so forth. And it's interesting to see how one culture approaches a movie um, and uh, so forth um, as compared to, to the original um, country where the movie was made. Now here's a bonus fact for you, um, just something I thought you'd like to know. Roger Vaden was um, a very prolific filmmaker and at different times of his life he was married to both Bridget Bardot, uh, the well-known uh, film actress and sex symbol, and Jane Fonda. And um, this movie is um, very, as you can imagine, it's very um, uh, surreal, it's, it's very... Um, dark um, but it's got that wonderful um, French take on on things like um, you know sex and sexuality and it's probably you know more more a little on the erotic side you know which isn't to say it, it doesn't follow the story very well but um, that's one to check out for yourself Star Grill. Now, the next version to hit the screen came in 1964, and it was an Italian version um, called Le... Um, hang on, how do I say this? Um, La Crypta El In Incubo, uh, which probably makes me sound more Spanish than anything else, so I do apologise for that, uh, Realmers. Hey, sorry. Um, but basically that trans translates as Vault of Horror. Um, and um, Christopher Lee um, obviously is the, the star of this film um, and he has a number of Italian co-stars. Co um, and um, so it's interesting if you compare Roger Vadim's version and how he approached the story of Camilla um, compared with the Italian version. And it's interesting to see how two uh, different European um, filmmakers can take the same subject and, and weave it and change it and make it um, very much their own project. Now, you'd expect that classic uh, British um, movie company, Hammer, to make their version of Camilla, and you'd be right. They did make a version called The Vampire Lovers in 1970, and it starred Ingrid Pitt as Camilla and Madeline Smith as Laura. And in this movie, they very much play up and make a lot of references to the Countessa Karnstein um, link, uh, which is present in the book. And they went on to make um, a, a few more vampire movies that actually had this link to um, Countessa Karnstein and the House of Karnstein um, and, and so forth. So it was, um, although they weren't sequels by any means, they were more standalone films, but um, they tried very hard to, to show that um, Camilla may be part of a larger um, uh, sort of dynasty of vampires, if you like, okay? And of course, like most of the um, classic old um, Hammer films, you can get that on DVD today, Dark Realms. It's wonderful. 
Now before I end this section Dark Realmers, I just want to tell you about a version that I saw right here on YouTube. And like all the others, it was totally different from each of the ones I've mentioned today. Because this one was set in America just after the Civil War. And it starred Meg Tilly and Roy Dotrice uh, played her father. And the best part was that it was um, also starred the wonderful late uh, Roddy McDowell. And <clears throat> this one was different in the fact that, um, that uh, the ca uh, carriage accident, um, you know, uh, Roy Dotry's, um Laura's father, checks and finds they're all dead, apart from Camilla. So, you know, they, they have to, you know, put the bodies in crates and so forth, and Camilla stays with them. Now, <clears throat> pardon me, it's while she's there that we get to see that there's something, yeah, a little bit creepy about this version of Camilla. Um, she never eats, she sleeps long, long time during the day, um, and she strangely sort of always tends to feel sick at, at meal time, so she never eats. Um, and of course we all know what that means. Well, um, there's a theory going around that um, the people in the South, now it's not sort of really mentioned whether they mean the South, or, you know, as in the South States of the USA, or just the South of the area where uh, they're living, um, people are suffering from this very unusual plague. Well, of course, we know it's not a plague, it's actually vampirism. Um, but into this comes the wonderful um, Roddy McDowell, who instantly suspects um, that Camilla is a vampire. But he's not the only one. They have a wonderful housekeeper, and she's very much into um, perhaps not really explained but perhaps African magic or or whatever you know because she's a, a negress and um, she attempts to sort of protect Laura by by placing charms and beads around her door and she ends up suffering the wrath of Camilla and that's quite um, that's quite a scary scene um, Dark Realmers because um, Camilla sort of summons or turns herself into a horde of bats that just basically bite her to death okay um, and that's a wonderful uh, take on 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 the story it sticks very much to um, uh, to the original story with a few embellishments of course but you can watch that one right here on YouTube and um, um, if you you know uh, have enjoyed or you've uh, gone and, and um, found out um, all the other versions I've mentioned to you. Don't forget, check this one out too. Um, just to nicely round out um, your, your sort of um, movie uh, feast, if you want to want to call it that, okay? Okay, Dark Realmers, thank you so much for joining me. That's um, it for our look at um, Camilla. Thank you so much for being part of it. Um, I hope you like the new background. It's not permanent. I haven't found one I really like, but hey, it's a lot more interesting than you having to stare at my Daleks and my Marvel figurines, okay? Well, I think so anyway. <laughs> okay, well, I hope you've um, had fun and learned a few things. I certainly learned a few things um, researching this one for you, and I I love looking through classic literature um, because there's some wonderful examples um, from the world of horror there. Okay, <clears throat> well, as I said, if you've enjoyed this, please hit um, the um, subscribe button because we have some wonderful content that um, we love sharing with you. And we upload uh, the, uh, the Dark Realm Diaries uh, every Friday. That's every Friday Australian time. So for people in North America and the Northern Hemisphere, that's on a Thursday, okay? Now, um, if you have liked um, our, our little presentation today, please hit like and also feel free to leave a comment because I love hearing from you and um, what you thought of um, each particular video and what you'd like to see yourselves, okay? So that's it from me, author Michael J. Elliott. Thank you so much once again for watching. And as I always say to you uh, at the end of every episode, Dark Realmers, stay in the light. Bye for now.
complained to their father, who, by the way, was um, a minister in um, the um, Church of Ireland, and he complained that they weren't really learning anything from their tutor. So they basically asked to have the tutor dismissed, which their father did. And Sheridan Le Fanu continued his education um, by teaching himself from reading from his father's library. Now, he went on to study law at Trinity College in Dublin in um, 1839. But the interesting thing was he never actually practiced law, even though he was called to the bar uh, in 1839, he um, went into journalism instead and he began um, submitting short stories. And one of his first short stories was called The Ghost and the Bone Cellar. Now in 1840, he actually began to own some newspapers and he actually owned um, the Dublin Evening Mail and he ended up owning several newspapers over his lifetime. Now he married Susanna Bennett on the 18th of December in 1844 and they had four children, Eleanor, Emma, Thomas and George. And Sheridan Le Fanu um, had a successful uh, career with writing as we all know and we'll look soon at his books and he died um, G'day Dark Realmers, it's horror author and illustrator Michael J. Elliott here with you again and thank you for joining me for another episode of the Dark Realm Diaries. Today we've got another book and trivia video for you and this week we're looking at um, Sheridan Le Fanu's classic vampire novella Carmilla. Okay, Dark Realms, now because we um, have usually a lot of information to try and get through on um, our videos, I've made a slight change and I've divided our videos up into three unique sections. Section one is about the author, section two is about the book, and section three is about uh, the movies and the other adaptations that um, the book went through. So let's start with the first section, and that's all about the author. Joseph Thomas Sheridan Le Fanu was born on the 18th of August in 1814 and he was born into a very literary family. His grandmother and his great uncle were both playwrights. His mother was also a writer and his niece Ron Rhoda uh, Broughton went on to become a successful novelist. Now he had an elder sister and a younger brother and his younger brother William complain plays out from there and one of the things in the story is too that Carmilla is actually just an anagram. She's actually as a vampire she's lived for hundreds of years and she's the Countess Karnstein and her real name is Macala uh, which is an anagram of Camilla. And um, that's uh, the basic setup of the story, Dark Realm. Is now, of course, um, you know you can you can read more about it, <clears throat> and um, all the other characters, of course, in the novel. And the novel is freely available. It's um, available, you know, as a free download because it's in the public domain now. Um, but you can also buy revised versions, and of course, you can buy a paperback of the. Um, of the novel too uh, because it's considered now a work of classic literature um, and so because it has that um, element of um, a friendship that borders on a, a sort of um, love um, which is in some ways um, a little bit uh, you wonder if it's unrequited love but also it's a dark unholy love because you wonder whether Camilla is actually sort of really and truly in love with Laura or she's just um, Laura's just another one of her many many victims that she's had over the years and that she's very good at wiling and getting her own um, at the age of 58 on the 7th of February 1873.
Now, Le Fanu wrote um, many short stories, um, but his three most famous works are Uncle Silas, The House by the Graveyard, and of course, Camilla. Now, Camilla has a number of claims to fame. First off, it's um, one of the very earliest examples of vampire fiction. Secondly, it also has a female vampire. And thirdly, it predates Dracula, that's Bram Stoker's Dracula, by a massive 26 years. So you can see why it's become such a classic of the um, Gothic genre. Now, of course, Camilla is also known uh, because it has a lesbian love story involved. Now, of course, it's not overt um, because of the time it was written, of course, but um, it's definitely there. And the novel tends to show um, the love between um, Camilla and the protagonist, Laura, as um, just a very intimate sort of friendship, you know, there's nothing, you don't read anything sexual there. Um, but in one passage, Laura actually wonders herself whether Camilla is wanting something more from her in terms of their friendship. Now, the basic storyline, which is very complex, I won't go into all of it, but basically, um, Laura uh, lives in a, a castle in Styria um, with her retired English father, who's retired uh, from the Austrian army, and um, they now live in this castle together. But she's very lonely. She has no friends, and and um, it's a very isolated existence now. Um, her father has arranged for a, a friend of his to bring his niece uh, to visit uh, Laura, so she won't be so lonely. But um, the niece dies in mysterious circumstances just before she's due to arrive. Now, after this, um, just outside their castle is a carriage accident, and you know they race to the scene, and there's um, the mother and um, you know a few other people, and Camilla. Um, now the mother says, "Look, we we have urgent business. We can't stay, but could you please look after Camilla?" Um, you know, until we can send for her. And um, she uh, explains, look, don't ask her about her past. Don't try and find out anything about her. She, But she's of sound mind. She's okay. Well, of course, Laura is overwhelmed and overjoyed um, to have a friend. Um, but Laura herself starts becoming sicker and um, ill, um, and that's where the vampirism comes into. Um, and her father becomes suspicious and the story